Hello everyone. Once again we meet and today we will be take up the, taking up the third stanza of the poem An Elementary School Classroom in Aslam by Stephen Spenter. Let's give the stanza a quick read. In this stanza the poet has started to talk about his own frustration and the living conditions of the children in the slum in particular. So he says, surely Shakespeare is wicked, the map a bad example. With ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. For lives have slightly turned in their cramped holes from fog to endless night. On their slag heap these children, where skins peep through by bones and spectacles of steel with mended glass like bottle bits on stones. All of their time and space are foggy slum. So blot their maps with slums as big as do. The poet is now trying to describe us how the donations which have been given to these children are irrelevant. He calls Shakespeare as wicked. Now Shakespeare is being called wicked here because Shakespeare as a playwright and as a, a poet never wrote about the poverty of the poor. He never wrote about the class differences and the social uh, gaps in the strata. But what he wrote was about the rich, the famous, the powerful. He wrote about kings and queens and he wrote about romance and he talked about love. He talked about beauty of nature, but never has he ever spoken about the poor and the downtrodden. So giving the example of, a, of Shakespeare in a classroom where they don't understand all these things such as love and romance and opportunity and opulence. So these children cannot relate to Shakespeare and therefore Shakespeare is being called wicked. And the map is a bad example because the map that has been put up shows all the major metropolitan cities, the countries, the far off places and, and it does not really talk about slums. So for a child living in a slum, when his only world has been what is visible out of the school windows and what is actually there in the slum, the squalor of the slum, trying to figure out what London looks like, what Paris is and uh, what Frankfurt or New York would be like, is something uh, that he cannot even com begin to comprehend. He, he cannot really absorb the enormity of those cities and the development that has taken place in those major metropolitan areas. So he is stuck with the dirt and filth, filth of his slum. And therefore the map is a bad example because it doesn't talk about slums. In the next line he talks about <clears throat> with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. Now let us look at this. Ships and sun and steel. We see an alliteration of S. But ships stand here for opportunity. Now why is ship an opportunity? Because it takes you from one place to another place where you can go and do your own thing, become uh, better economically and make your uh, good fortune. So ship is something that takes you from where you are, you are to a new place. So it's an opportunity for travel and making a life out of. Sun is a metaphor for joy and happiness because everything that is around us is because of the sun. No sun means darkness. Darkness means sadness. Darkness is doom. Sun is light. Light is hope. Hope is joy. So sun is a metaphor for joy and happiness. So what do these children lack in their lives? Opportunities, happiness and love. And the lack of these three tempts them to steal. Steal what? Anytime and every time they get an opportunity to get something, they go get it. Not necessarily it is provided, sometimes they snatch at it. Now we've all been to fast food joints, we've all been to uh, you know, places where food is being served and there are always takeaways and every time we come out of the takeaway, we have these street urchins and beggars who start following us, begging us for food or to buy them something. Right? So because they see us uh, you know the better lot of the society go and buy a burger from a place or buy a glass of soft drink or a softy cone and start eating it they simply come running and they start begging because they want it too so and in case if we are even just a wee bit uh, 
careless about their whereabouts around us some of our things get flicked some of our stuff gets stolen so these children are on a constant lookout for opportunities because they feel that if they have what we have and we feel happy you know with a bottle of soda in our hand with a bottle of soft drink in our hand and we uh, have fun and frolic with friends they see the same thing and they relate it to happiness and joy and they ask for it too they want it too and if the opportunity provides itself they snatch and go for it so they are tempted because they are have nots because they do not have therefore they want to have it and they will go to any lengths to get it so the poet further says that lives that slightly turn in their cramped holes now cramped holes are their small living quarters in the slum now of course they are not going to have lavish mansions and bungalows in the slum they will have all they will have would be huts and hutments and small uh, shanty sheds to spend their nights and days in so lives that slightly turn why why is being the word slightly being used here because the it is the connivance it is the scheme of the entire Uh, existence in the slum to keep them limited to slum because in the slum they will not have opportunities for growth and because they will not have opportunities of growth they will never grow and because of the fact that they never grow they never grow out of the slum they never are able to leave the slum actually like we see in the first stanza the example of a impoverished father not being able to provide his son enough education and enough health and nutrition to be able to go out of the slum he is stuck there he is he is in inherited poverty and because of that poverty he has got malnutrition he will probably never be able to grow out of the slum and that is how the entire slum and the life and existence in the slum is scheming to keep those people within and we'll see in the next stanza how the poet is suggesting uh, this can be broken and the children can get an opportunity so this is scheme of keeping the people within the slum stuck in the slum never breaking free from the slum is what the poet is uh, sad about and is calling uh, it out that they will be stuck from fog in their lives now fog we th- read was a metaphor for uncertain future so i've written uncertainty here it's a metaphor so from uncertainty to endless night now night is a symbol of night is darkness day is brightness so day is light night is lack of light lack of light is lack of hope lack of hope is despondence so their lives move from uncertainty to utter lack of hope that is despondence and that is the cycle of the life they wake up in the morning uncertain of what will become of them they sleep in the night with a hope that has been lost and vanquished by the existence in the slum and on their slag heap these children now slag is industrial based this is another hint about the it is in fact a very sure hint about where the slum is located we are being told that there are heaps of slag slag is nothing but industrial based which comes out of smelting of iron okay so now we know that the slum is located in the middle of a Uh, industrial town specifically in the industrial waste land where the waste of the industries is dumped that is where the slum is been uh, that is where the slum is located so slag 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 he gives us the exact location it tells us that the slum is located in an industrial waste land in the middle of a industrial town so all those hints you know gray skies lady skies uh, far from river scapes uh, and stars of birds far far from gusty waves all this leads to this so now you can understand the all the location hints that the poet has given along so far then the condition of the children is given the, the children wear skin speak through by bones so the children are so emaciated so thin that it is almost as if they are wearing uh, their skin has been stretched on their skeletons there's hardly any flesh on their bones that is the height of malnutrition these children are suffering from and they wearing spectacles of steel now spectacles of steel with mended glass mended means repaired 
spectacles, glasses that you wear for correction of eyesight and even those are not being provided to them. So even the very fundamental, the very basic health amenities are not available to these children. So they are wearing broken glasses which have been somehow put together with glue or other stuff and they don't even have access to primary health care. And then he's comparing these children to bottle bits and stones. Now you could have seen that if there's a, in a parking lot, if there's a, a bottle which has been thrown by some uh, idiot who doesn't believe in putting things in waste and dustbins, uh, the next morning the rag pickers come along and they pick up those glass bottles or plastic bottles and they sell them uh, for some money. But in case any of those bottles is crushed or broken, specifically a glass bottle, because glass is highly recyclable, but if the glass bottle is broken, trust me, nobody will pick it up and slowly over a period of time, vehicles will keep passing over it, it will get crushed and ultimately turn into sand. It will become so fine that it will not even be visible to the eye. And that is what is the condition of the children. They are wasted like broken bottles and a broken bottle is of use to nobody. So they are wasted like broken bottles and they are useless to the society. So he's reiterating the fact of rootless weeds from the first stanza line two. So these children are useless to the society. They're useless because of the way they are right now. And all of their time and space are foggy slum, he says. All of their life is spent in the foggy slum. So all of their time and space means their entire lives. Their entire life. Their entire life is spent in the slum. They are born in squalor and filth and poverty and they die in the same conditions. So all of their time and space are foggy slum. And now in the last line we see the frustration of the poet come out, coming out. We see, his, we see his exasperation. He says, so blot their maps with slums as big as doom. He said, don't give them the political maps that you put up, the open-handed map that is useless. That is of no use to these children. Make them a map where the slums of the world are shown so that these children can relate to the places marked, the slums marked on the slum and take some heart that they are not the only ones who are so unfortunate or struck with misfortune. There are others like him, them. So this is poet's frustration coming out having described their existence to us. That is what this stanza talks about. And of course, we see alliteration of S here, uh, fog and endless night are metaphors. Again, spectacles, steel and skin is alliteration of S. Bottle bits and stones, simile, as big as doom. As big as doom, doom is death. So, like the finality of death, let us mark their maps with slums and let that be the final call. And that's it. Put an end to these people. So, block them maps with the slums as big as doom, as big as doom becomes a simile. That's the end of this third stanza. Um, I'll be continuing after a small break with the fourth stanza. So let's take a pause. I'll be back soon. Thank you. Welcome back to the classroom. Let us look at the fourth and the final stanza of the poem. In this poem, the poet is trying to give us a solution to all the problems and difficulties that he has described earlier with the children and the life in the slum. So he's talking here, unless governor, inspector, visitor. So who's a governor? Governor is the policy maker, part of the government. And the implementers, the inspectors, the implementers, the officers, the bureaucracy, which is responsible for implementing the policies that the government makes and ensuring that the money that is sent for the benefit of these people reaches them and is utilized properly. And then the third category of people he talks about is the donators, those who give freely out of their own sweet will, altruistically without a uh, necessity of receiving anything in return. If these kind of these three categories of people they visit the slum, says the poet, then things can start to change in the slum. The conditions will begin to change. 
So what will happen? He says, if these people come and take care of Islam, then the map on the wall will become a reality for these children. Means these children will be able to move out, grow out of the Islam and go into the world and contribute. So he says, unless governor inspector visitor, this map becomes their window. So if these three categories of people, they work together for the slum, then the map on the wall will become a reality for them. Otherwise, and here's a word of caution, otherwise these windows, the actual windows in the classroom through which the classroom children are only able to see the slum that they live in. These windows, this slum will actually shut upon them, close in upon them, entrap them, ensnare these people into a world of death and gloom, in a world full of despondence, in a world full of uncertainty and life catacombs. He's using a simile here. He's using a simile here to convey that if these people do not act, then for these children, these people living in the slum, they will be like being trapped in catacombs. Now catacombs, I've given a description here. It is a maze, it is a you know, a labyrinth of tunnels uh, that was dug out over the ages through millennia, through thousands of years under big metropolitan cities in Europe where the bones that were uh, in the graveyards and the churches were removed and then they were uh, kept in underground tunnels. The tunnels were being continuously dug out without any plan or without any blueprint or layout. So wherever the tunnels went, the people just kept digging and keeping the remains of their dead. Now that ended up becoming so complex and uh, such a maze of confusing tunnels that it is believed that if you enter the catacomb, it is highly unlikely that you will ever find your way out of it. So what is trying to suggest that unless these people come and act upon the condition and work for the benefit of the people in the slum, these people will continue to spend their uh, sorry lives in the slum and will never be able to come out of it. That is what he's trying to convey here. And he says that these people should act in a manner that they should help these people break out of the slum. So he says, break or break till they break the town. Break the town means reach out into the town, have access to the city life and are able to move out of their slum and show the children to the green fields and make their world run as your own gold sands. And he's saying the solution lies in education. He says that once we decide that we need to help these people to come out of the slum, the thing that we should do is we should give the children opportunities. Green fields is a metaphor for opportunities. Number three, if you can see number three is metaphor. So number three, green fields is a metaphor. It is a metaphor which stands for opportunities. He says we must provide these children opportunities because once we start giving them the opportunities, then these children will be able to run azure. Azure means blue. The azure here means blue. Blue basically means open skies, no longer congested, polluted part of the city where the slum exists. Now, these children will be able to go under clean blue skies, go and find the gold sands. Now, gold sands here refers to the golden beaches. Beaches are seashores, places on a landmass from where you can go out to new places, to across the oceans, make your life get new opportunities, explore new things and do what you always wanted to do rather than be stuck in one place. So he says the children will be able to run under blue open skies, go to beaches and go and make their new opportunities available to them. So gold sands. Now gold sands again children uh, like sour cream if you recall, we had talked was a metonymy. So gold sands again here refers to something which is associated with beaches. Gold sand, golden sand is associated with beaches. So instead of talking and saying 
let the children run azure on beaches he is using something associated with beaches and using that to talk about it so gold sands becomes a metonymy and he says let their tongues let their tongues run naked into books run naked naked here means no holds barred unrestricted unrestricted access to education let these children have unrestricted access to education let them have the opportunity to study as much as they want because when the white leaves white leaves green leaves so it says when the white leaves will turn when the pages of the books will be turned by the children and then as they will go from one page to the next page basically saying when they will get education new opportunities will open up for those children new opportunities open and then here in these two lines we see that both these lines start with a same word now when two consecutive lines two or more consecutive lines they begin with the same word there's a figure of speech that happens there and that is called anaphora a n a p h o r a so when two consecutive lines two or more consecutive lines begin with the same word it is called anaphora so that's another poetic device and in the last line he says history theirs whose language is the sun now what exactly does poet here mean now the sun i have written is a metaphor for a philanthropist now philanthropist is somebody who gives selflessly without any expectation of return so he is the person who gives it altruistically altruistically means without any expectation of return so he says history theirs whose language is the sun what he is saying is that those people who help the people in the slum or poor downtrodden people without any expectation of any kind of return they are the ones who make a difference in the lives of these people like the sun now the sun doesn't take anything from us it gives us heat it gives us energy it gives us light it gives us happiness and all the life around us is possible today as we know it only because of the sun and yet sun does not take anything in return so he's saying when we pe such people who do not want to take anything and yet wish to give all that they possibly can for the betterment and upliftment of the slum children those are the people who go down in the history of the lives of these people who are remembered by these people let me give you a very short example uh, i recall uh, we had a, a, a very young boy a boy of 15 or 16 uh, who had recently come from his native place and started uh, living nearby our house and one day somebody introduced him to our household saying that he was willing to do household chores like uh, an in-house servant and uh, we took on took him in and he used to come to do the cleaning and uh, swipe wiping and mopping of stuff and doing the utensils so one day when he saw my brother and i studying he just stood there for a while seeing this my mother uh, next day bought him some books uh, of uh, hindi language and a few notebooks and every time my brother and i would we were young we were pretty small in school in middle school every time we would sit down to study my mom would make him sit down and study as well so slowly and gradually over the years he learned how to write his name and because he had learned how to write his name he took his first examination of middle school and then of high school and once he had done his high school he got into a government job as a peer and once he got into the job of a peer he had a stable job and he grew plus he showed he had shown keen interest in cooking so my mom also taught him uh, how to cook and slowly over the years he started cooking in various parties and small functions and he was able to make himself a life 
which was definitely what was not what he had expected would become of him and was never able to think that yes this could be a possible future so now when we meet him his children are doing well uh, they are in colleges some of them have passed out and uh, from colleges they've graduated they got into good jobs so whenever we meet them they always recall that yes it had been our mother who really encouraged their father to study and therefore their lives are better today so this is how people go into the lives of these people they change the history so you help one child make his life better and the next generation gets better and better because that person has got a better exposure thanks to you so the history there is whose language is the sun this is what it means that people should come out it's an appeal an open appeal by the poet that people should come out of their uh, closed thoughts come out open into the open and freely help these people to grow out of these slums let them have education let them have opportunities and they will do the rest of it themselves beyond that you don't need to help them you don't need to help them monitor you just need to set them up skill them you know it's like you give a man a fish and he'll be begging every day but you teach him how to fish and he'll never go hungry again and that is what the poet is trying to tell all those people who have the ability and the capability to provide this skill this opportunity to the people in the slum to the poor impoverished people in the society so children very quickly let's see windows is a repetition break 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 is a repetition like catacombs is a simile uh, gold sands is metonymy green fields green leaves white leaves these are all uh, metaphors and so is the sun the sun as well is a metaphor and we see a new poetic device anaphora when in two consecutive lines they begin with the same word it is called an anaphora now what i want you to do is to go through this uh, entire video understand it make your notes and uh, of course uh, you you all know the drill you have to uh, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you are constantly up updated of the new videos that are put up and of course like and share the link thank you so much and have a wonderful day